Hello YouTube, welcome back to Operation Lathe, episode 35 I believe we're on. I'm Southern Wolverine and last time we got the remnants of the Lathe space plane transfer vehicle etc 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 into Lathe orbit. And we are going to attempt, attempt to land it now. So we're just going to aim for one of these islands I think, so I'm going to aim kind of really high with the intention that this is going to, I'm going to aim for this one I think with the intention that's going to kind of rotate under me and then I'll catch atmosphere and it'll cut me down a bit from there. So I might actually even raise it up a bit. You can always turn and come back to it if need be. Uh, we're going to start from there. Uh, I have a quick save on this from moments ago. Uh, so we're going to go ahead for this and this burn is coming up quick so Let's just get ready. Uh, the engine would, in fact, work better if it were on. And now we're just going, going, going. Here we go. Goodbye, transfer vehicle. You sort of did your job. At least that middle part did its job anyway. Not so much the rest of it. Okay. So there we go. We are... We are coming down one way or another. Hopefully, the way that does not involve a crashed and broken spacecraft. I'm just kidding, Bob. Everything's fine. Oh, look at Bob. He's actually happy anyway. I figured I'd have to be comforting him. He'd be freaking out. No, he's loving this. Although, you know, it would be good for aerodynamics if we were to close the shield. Okay. And we'll change cameras also to auto so that we are now look like we are flying at extremely high altitude on our way into lathe. And we're going to try to stay pointed towards our velocity vector because otherwise we'll come in with a, you know, a kind of a nasty side wind which might lead to us doing things like spinning and crashing and burning and dying and that would be all kinds of bad. I'm going to go ahead and manually switch this to air breathing so that I don't burn any more oxidizers. Since I had set some oxidizer aside in these tanks, but it seems I've burned it all and a little bit of what I had in the middle too. So I had set 30 oxidizer aside for that little bit of a burn and I used 60. I uh, should still have plenty of fuel to get back, uh, but uh, yeah, we don't want to burn any more of that oxidizer until it's time to leave. Hmm. I have a feeling, just a hunch, that this is going to end up putting me right in the middle of this body here of water, and uh, we'll have to pick a direction to fly. Who knows? It might work out. It might work out. We'll uh, try to stay optimistic here. We should get a shot at one of these islands at least uh, for a nice for a nice landing, and we got an opportunity for a daytime landing here too. Uh, fortunately, these islands were on the sunny side, so we didn't have to do a whole bunch of orbits to wait for them to come around. Because uh, let me tell you, tr trying to land an, an aircraft in the dark, even with the landing lights that I've got on there, is an adventure when you don't have a nice lit runway to try to land on. Because uh, what looks flat ends up being a big hill, you know, or a cliff, or water, or... <laughs> any number of things that uh, are unhealthy for your space vehicle to attempt to land on. So we're not we're not encountering the atmosphere yet so our orbit's not really changing. We are having an effect from the planet rotating underneath us. It looks like we're seeing that target island now. Yep, that's gotta be it. Nothing else is out in front of us. I have a feeling this is going to come way back to the west once we do hit atmosphere. Well, it's hard to say at what point that will be. So we may not hit atmosphere until we're already kind of past this island. So I'm going to kind of nose down and, and just do some fast forward until we get to our 50 kilometer mark, which is where the atmosphere starts on Lathe. And sure enough, we're going to overshoot. But we do get a look at this island on the way over. So it looks like this is a nice, see we're quite high, you can't even really see detail unfortunately. But there is what looks to be a nice coastal plain here that could be a good landing site. 
Uh, oh, how's that for cool? <laughs> With Jewel coming up over the horizon. That is badass. Excuse me, but man, that is cool. Uh, we may act. This might be a decent landing strip too, although it's hard to tell how much elevation there is on this. Uh, and if we do end up out in the middle here, and we don't want to fly all the way across this ocean to that other island, we might be able to turn north and land over there on this big peninsula sticking out. The boot, the boot of this island, sort of the Italy of Leith or something. Or if we really go, yeah, we're coming really far out still. We might even still go over for this island. With this, uh, the land of lakes over here. Because this looks like a nice, nice lowlands, almost a natural uh, landing strip, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully. We're gonna, so we got some options here, but I'm not uh, going to do anything just yet. We're just going to glide down until we can get enough intake air. To power our uh, to power our jets. Um, uh, since we're kind of just cruising, I think I might take some atmosphere readings. Let's log the temperature. Set a log the temperature. Damn you. We'll just go ahead and keep that. I'll, I'll run one of these atmosphere analysis analyses. 220 science for that bad boy from Lay's upper atmosphere. Let's do that, and then we'll do another one from the low atmosphere or something. We'll uh, log pressure data. See, that's another 132. We'll keep that data. All right, all right. Now, time time to pay attention to flying this thing. What's our orbit looking like? Yeah, it looks like uh, we're gonna end up closer to the land of lakes than either the boot or our initial target. So, uh, this is this looks like it's gonna be our landing site. <clears throat> oh yeah, you can even see it ahead already. That's pretty cool. All right, now I'm not getting a lot of atmospheric effect at the moment, but now that we're getting down into the middle atmosphere here, we should start to get some lift generating. We'll get the re-entry effects any moment now. And once we have lift and aerodynamic control authority, we should be able to get some uh, idea what our flight characteristics are going to be like. It should be similar to what it was on Kerbin. I do love this. Uh, this we're <laughs> we're glowing hot with re-entry. We got our landing site out in front of us. We got the big green ball of uh, Jewel up ahead of us with this dark side kind of down here. The blue haze of the lace atmosphere. There, you can get some very cool moments in this game. Very cinematic kind of things happening. Hmm. Okay, so we're getting a look here. We could land over by the lakes. Some flat ground here. We could land in this kind of valley, although this kind of smallish lake here sort of gets in the way of that. Oh. Uh, this is not as flat as it originally looked. This here is a big old mound. So we're not going to try... Well, we could maybe land on top of it. But down here would, seems like it would be a better place. We're still going pretty fast. We're not quite at our regular aerodynamic speeds yet, so I'm not even going to light up the engine. We are in air breathing. So I'm going to let us get a bit lower. We got plenty of intake air, though, so maybe I will light this up in a moment. And get, get ready. Get ready, Bob. Oh, see, now Bob's freaking out. <laughs> he, he does not not like flying aircraft. He was cool with it while I was in space, but now that it's an aircraft again, he's somewhat somewhat less happy with the situation. All right, so let's light the engine up just a bit. That'll help us gain some control also. I'll run my other atmosphere analysis. Flying at length, okay. Do a let's turn that monopropellant on while we're here. Let's do that crew report. Go ahead and transmit that back. Oh, okay. We can just uh, looks like we can just go for our landing now. Let's go ahead and put the gear down. I said, put the gear down. Put the landing lights on. Even though it's even though we're in the sun, 
it will help us see where where we are relative to the ground. I would like to not land on this hillside though, so let's see what our maneuverability is like. It's not not bad. We're still we're still a bit heavy thanks to all the fuel in the center tank. But we are not burning through the, the liquid fuel in these outboard tanks very quickly thanks to our highly efficient air breathing mode. Uh, so it looks like we'll just uh, we'll just come in this way, I think. This is looking pretty decent. We've got some dunes. Hopefully this uh, texture doesn't mess with my landing. I don't think it will. That might just be a, like a texture and not actual surface variation. If it's actually surface variation, we might be in for a bit of a rough landing. But I have a feeling that's, that's not the case. Right, we're still descending kind of quickly, but um, I'm going to let it do that for a little bit longer so we can get close to the ground. And then I'll nose up to, uh, to cut that velocity down. We're gonna, so we're going to keep an eye on this gauge up here, our vertical, vertical velocity. Okay, now we're quite close. we got some ground scatter. So it looks like this is just texture, this apparent dunage here. Okay, so now we are... It's dunage as opposed to duna. Very different. So this is actually looking like a decent place to land. All right, a little bit more, a little bit more. Slow down our descent. We're coming into a bit of a hill here. We'll see, that wasn't quite as flat as it looked. <laughs> Woo! Okay, we're down. Break, 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 break! Whoa, don't take back off, please. Oh, don't take back off. Okay. I do like the uh, fact that I have confirmation that the brakes are on from these uh, <laughs> these landing gear brake lights that I've set. Woo! And we have touched down on lathe. All right. Set the parking brake. All right. We even have the planet in the background. Very cool. Maybe we can taxi over one of those lakes and check it out later. But for now, for now, we must perform the most important function of any Kerbal setting foot on a new body. I'll see Bob's calm down. Now we'll let him get out and he'll get all excited. First, he's got a radio back. Tell everybody that he made it with the crew report. So we'll let him do that. There we go. Got our science. Now, now it's time to get out, sir. Woo! Okay, we unceremoniously dropped onto the ground instead of going down the ladder. Well, Bill does like, or Bob rather, does like to make an entrance. Woo! Now pose for photos with your plane. Actually, let's go to the other side and do it. We'll have the sun in our face. We'll have the planet behind us. Woo! Yeah! <laughs> Well done. Well done, Bob. You have succeeded. Now let's plant our mission flag so that everyone will know whose moon this is. Bam! This moon belongs to Operation Lathe. That didn't even go backwards. Nice. Success! Bob, Bob Kerman here first landed on Lathe. He came in peace for all Kerbal kind. Oh, whatever. Ha! <laughs> da 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 <laughs> Alright, take a surface sample. Ooh, 420. That is some science. The soil sample contains traces of salt. You wonder if it was blown here, or if the area was once underwater. So it seems we have salt water oceans. That is pretty impressive, too. So this planet seems to be very livable. I mean, the oceans could have been methane or something else unpleasant like that, but that does not seem to be the case. 
Let's take an EVA report, too. This place seems nice. You're so comfortable you feel like taking your helmet off. You check the box on your report for looks breathable. Still, uh, out of an abundance of caution, let's keep the helmet on there, Bob. Uh, yeah, let's keep that data. Woo! All right. And now let's uh, satisfy our curiosity by getting back in and running some more of those experiments that we've got. Damn it, sir. You need to get on the aircraft. Come on. Transfer to the ladder. Oh, are you going to not be able to get back in now? Because that would really suck. <laughs> Come on. Don't tell me he's not going to be able to get back in. There we go. It just didn't want to work on that side for some reason. Why the hell would that be the case? We're leaning that direction a little bit. Maybe if gravity was just pulling him off or something. Speaking of gravity... Let's run our gravioli sensor. Log the gravity data for 280 more science. Let's, log, let's, let's actually look at what the temperature is. It is 0.8 degrees. So it's fairly cold here, but it's not quite freezing, which makes sense because we have liquid water. So it would have to be above zero, but it's not much above zero. I wouldn't want to go swimming here. It'd be pretty darn cold. <laughs> Now let's log that. Log that for posterity. We'll run a pressure mat barometer from the surface. And what is the pressure? 0.7 almost. So not 70% almost of uh, carbon sea level. So that explains some of the differences in our handling characteristics because there's not quite as much air to give us lift and things. Although we also have less gravity. So. See, the pressures here seem to be a bit below that of Kerbin, definitely at a manageable level. That's more or less what I was just saying, so glad the game agrees with me. Uh, and our accelerometer, so that's at not quite 0.8 G. So, relative to Kerbin, the ratio of gravity to atmosphere is, is higher, but it's similar, and they're, you know, so this plane worked quite well here due to those similarities. And a seismic scan says that the tidal forces appear to be churning the interior of the moon. Alright. Very cool stuff. Made it! <laughs> uh, Alright, I think... We're going to have to start planning his, uh, his rescue mission. But I think what I want to do is he's going to be out here for a while waiting for that. So I'm going to quick save before I do something stupid and get him killed. I'm gonna go turn the brakes off. I'm gonna try and just move him over towards one of these nice lakes so he has you know someplace scenic to hang out while he's waiting. And we just want to keep him at a, <laughs> a somewhat lower speed so he doesn't accidentally take off. So if we keep him under about 50 or so he should be able to stay on the surface. Whew. Okay, it's a ways. I'll be back in a minute. Okay, here you are, Bob. Get comfortable, man. <laughs> Gonna be here a while. So it's a good thing we got you a nice beachfront spot to hang out in. No nice sun, sky, and scenery. Nice beach. There won't be many Kerbal ladies in their bikinis, unfortunately since you are, as far as we know, anyway, the only living thing on this planet. Although perhaps if we could send a space submarine, we could land in the water and look for, you know, sea creatures or something. As if you've got liquid oceans of water and you've got oxygen, who knows? Who knows what sorts of things might be on such a world? Okay, here we go. Let's just settle him in here. Alright, here you go, Bob. Get comfortable. <laughs> it's gonna be a couple of years. I hope you've got plenty of snacks in that capsule. A 
Oh yeah. Oh, uh, all right. I could start the rescue mission, but I think I'm going to go ahead and save that for another episode. Uh, that leaves this episode a little bit on the short side, but uh, I think this is a great point to stop here with our successful completion of the mission that we set out to do. Well, half completed anyway. The other half is to bring him back safely, which we will start that in the next episode. So thank you guys for watching. I'm Southern Wolverine. This is Kerbal Space Program Operation Lathe, and that, that hero of Kerbal Kind is Bob Kerman, and he is going to join me in wishing all of you a good day.